Good morning, biology students. So, um, yesterday you guys looked at the whale evolution, and you should have seen that you had two pieces of evidence that you were looking at there to kind of start to support the idea that whales um, had a common ancestor that was four-legged. So, you saw um, anatomical evidence where you looked at the fossils of the um, or of the ancestors, the possible ancestors that you sorted. And then you also saw the evidence between the mammals and whales to help you support the idea that whales are mammals, which they have that similar arm bone, and they have the similar brain, similar physiological things in terms of body, the way that they regulate their body temperature, the way that they give birth, um, and those types of features too. And then we saw some things um, with the whales where we were seeing some different um, parts there. So today you're going to work on part two where you're going to look at two other pieces of evidence. So you're going to look at DNA evidence and you're going to look at embryological evidence. So you're going to open that document and it will look like this. You are going to need your um, slides from yesterday. So you have those to finish. There's one more thing to do with them. So at, um, on yesterday you should have sorted your cards on your um, fossils here. Okay, so you should have these sorted by the ages that you thought they should be um, for your original sequence. Um, whatever you thought is how you got them. And then you did them last night with your homework. That was the very last thing that you were going to do was open up here, this document, and you had your whale fossil ages. And based on the ages, you should have resorted your cards um, from who was the longest ago to who is the most recent. So this is the order. Um, where you're looking at these guys were 55 to 56 million years ago when they were living. And you get all the way down here to this guy who's 34 to 40 million years ago. Okay, from when he was living. That's the Basilosaurus that was in the video that we watched. Um, so here's the other fossil evidence and fossil organisms here. So that was this slide where you reordered them based on the, the actual years of the fossils. Where you're going to start with lesson two is to look at um, the two new fossils. So if you remember in the video, Gingrich said that he was um, hopeful that they would find more um, fossils and get more information. So here's two more fossils that were found. And you're going to take those two. And you're, they're at the end on this last slide. So you've got fossils A and B. So you're just looking at them and looking at how you sorted these based on the fossil years you're going to, from your data that you had, from here, you're going to look at these two fossils and you're going to decide about how old do you think they are. So how many million years ago were they on land or on Earth? Okay, and then you're going to justify why you picked them, right, in the relationship to the ones that you've already sorted. Then what you're going to do is actually look at um, this evidence of the fossils. So when you open this document up, there's lots of evidence that's here. I'm going to read through it. You've got these different um, images that are here. It gives you some history about the um, organisms and how we can use fossils to help support different pieces of evidence. Okay, so these are the um, this is information about those organisms. So you get the, the name, you get the ideas of when they were living, about how big they were. Um, is some of the information that we've gathered from the fossils in terms of the way that they work. Again, when you're looking at these, remember that they don't just lose their legs. It's the ones that they actually, um, this guy saw, you can see he moves both in the water and on land, and then there's variation in the size of the flippers, so some of them can swim out farther, they maybe get more food, survive better, and they get separated from the ones that were still on land. So you get this shifting in populations and taking advantage of different niches like we've been talking about. So you're going to answer these questions, okay, and look at how they've changed over time. Um, give some examples from those fossil cards. Talk about which ones were mostly in water, which ones weren't, what were some of the changes that were there. Then you're going to do this last um, observation number four, where you're looking at embryological evidence. This is an embryo where it's developing, this is when it's really young. Remember I showed you how we all started from one um, cell and I showed you that model. So that one cell divides, 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 divides. And you get this embryo that looks something like this. And so this is really early embryo. 
and then as it continues to develop, to develop, it starts to look like this. Okay. And if you Google, you can find images of human embryos, um, it, drawings like this, that you can see kind of what, how humans might compare to um, to the whale. All right. So you're answering a couple of questions looking at the embryos and how they've developed over time and where the nostrils are moving in the, in the hind limb. Make some predictions about DNA. Remember that DNA determines your strength, which means it determines the adaptations that you have. So as DNA um, might, what might DNA look like in our ancestors? So again, when you're looking at your whales, how might the DNA be similar or different when you're looking at those? Um, and then you actually have some evidence of DNA. So you'll click on both, please. I know it's a lot of clicking, but um, and that's how it to get your paper. So this is showing you um, DNA, and the amino acids is uh, what make up proteins, and that's how we um, can compare DNA segments, because the DNA determines the amount of which amino acids go together, and we're going to talk about that um, in our next unit some more, but as a quick introduction, you're looking at DNA when you're looking at amino acids. So this tells you how similar they are to the whale protein. We're just looking at one protein casein, this is a protein that's found in milk, and mammals make milk, just like um, all mammals. Okay, so whales, remember, are mammals. So this is the similarity of the protein to in whales, to whales. So a pig is 68% similar to whales, where a mouse is 38% similar to the whale. And so what's happening is there's different mutations that happen. One example of a mutation is this transposome. And what a transposome is, if you look at this, is it's an insertion of a piece of information. Um, that was cut and put into this place of DNA and actually changes the um, protein sequence a little bit. And that's what we're looking at up here. So what you can then do is you can actually use DNA on these trees. And that's where most trees are actually made now, is to look at um, how the branch and then how they're similar. And then that gives us information about um, related things. Okay, and so that's what you're looking at here, and then you're answering the questions um, around using that evidence for here. And then there's a last video to watch where you'll answer these two questions, and that's as far as you'll get today. So let me know if you have questions. You can shoot me an email. Again, I apologize. This is a little bit longer than normal, but there's a lot that you're looking at, and you're going to be learning a lot. Um, if I don't see you on the Zoom, have a great day.